if you actually draw the waveform it will be growing linearly because current is constant. So, I is constant when the current is constant which is charging the capacitor the capacitor voltage charges linearly. So, this is the time and this is the V c. Now, we take advantage of this because now we make a controlled current source somehow somehow we build a circuit which will take this input and convert this into appropriate current somehow. If this happens the input voltage is converted into current if the input voltage is less the current will be less the charging rate will be less. If the input voltage is higher the current will be more the charging rate will be more and so on this is what will happen. Now, what we do is uh, we take a comparator and uh, to the comparator we connect a say some level some constant level and we find out how much time does it take to reach the um, level. So, you will find that uh, if the input voltage is higher it will take less time to reach the level if the input voltage is less the charging if the input voltage is less the current will be small because we are using V to I converter somehow and uh, if the current is small the charging rate will be small if the charging rate is small this is the waveform and this waveform will cause the level to grow up to a certain level after a long time. So, we have uh, T 1 then T 2 and then T 3. So, what we mean to say is that we are if we use this theme we are able to somehow convert voltage into time somehow we can convert voltage into time. It may not be proportion, proportional time is not pro, it is inversely proportional to voltage now, but we can make it directly proportional also. So, we just look at the theme that voltage can be converted to appropriate time using constant current source and capacitor it is possible. So, once we know that somehow we can convert V into T and uh, we modify the circuit such that the time is directly proportional to V not indirectly proportional somehow we modify the uh, circuit in such a fashion that the time is directly proportional to the V. For example, what we can do is uh, let me rub out this. So, what we do is uh, we take uh, some time some time fixed time fixed time and from this fixed time we sub subtract this variable time say T x I write here T x and this is capital T and if we take T minus T x T minus T x then what will be T minus T x for small voltage it will be something like this this will be the T minus T x for a small voltage what will be T minus T x for somewhat larger voltage this will be T minus T x and so on and what the third case is that this this is the third case. So, this will be the T minus T x for. So, now we find that the T, T minus T x is proportional to voltage input and uh, this in general T is proportional to V. So, it is possible to build a circuit by which we get T proportional to V. So, voltage is converted to time. If we have some time suppose this is the time proportional to input voltage say 3.3 volt then what we can do is uh, we can give this to an AND gate and one of the input to this AND gate can be a high frequency signal which I draw it this way it is a continuous high frequency signal. Now, the output high frequency signal will be something like this gated high frequency signal because the gate is open only for a certain duration. Now, this I pass to a counter everybody knows counter. So, after this period after this period the output of counter is latched. 
So, here the output of counter is latched and if it is latched the counter will show you some count some count say 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 because these many pulses passed through the gate during the unknown time period unknown time period depends on unknown voltage. So, if voltage is increased the time period will increase if the time period increases this time period will increase number of pulses will increase and the count will increase and this is what exactly we want we want voltage to get converted to some number and that number the output of counter will be digital because counter is a digital device and therefore, I have written it in an analog form so as to understand that, but output of computer will be digital. So, this way with this theme it is possible to convert the analog signal into digital it is possible correct. So, this is the theme of a single slope ADC, this is the basic theme of single slope ADC. So, what is done? Analog input is taken, it is converted to current. So, what we can do is uh, you can draw a block diagram of this. So, analog input, then uh, what is the block? V to I conversion, then use that current in the form of a current source to a capacitor this is just schematic diagram the output of capacitor is taken it is passed to the comparator with some V reference. So, some gating circuitry some logic circuitry logic circuit ending or ring whatever circuit and it gives T proportional to V input. So, this is the V input and once we get T proportional to V input we can pass it to through the AND gate with some high frequency clock source and we get gated clock and if this gated clock is connected to a digital counter. then the output will be digital digital output. So, we start from voltage input and we go up to digital output this is the basic theme of single slope A to D converter. There are some problems with the single slope A to D converter single slope A to D converter is simple, but there are some problems. For example, suppose this capacitor we use a capacitor in the circuit, but the capacitors change with respect to time. We buy a capacitor suppose 10 microfarad, 10 microfarad today it may be 10 microfarad, but after 2 years it may go to 11 microfarad it is possible or less than 9 microfarad anything. So, the capacitors change the values slightly and uh, if the capacitor changes the value the slope is going to change if the slope is going to change the digital output is going to change. So, it is dependent on the capacitor value. So, what is the disadvantage of uh, single slope ADC the digital output output depends on the passive components like capacitor capacitor. 